Sunday to Thursday, 10 to 1, it's Late Night Graham Torrington. For five years, Marilyn's mother, Jessica, was hounded by scammers. 30,000 scam letters were sent to her in that time, and there were hundreds of phone calls. Jessica fell into the trap and was persuaded to part with 50,000 pounds. Marilyn thinks that her mum had a mental health condition which should be recognised. And Marilyn joins me on the programme right now. Marilyn, thank you very much indeed for joining me on the programme tonight. No, that's fine. Thank you for having me. How old was your mother when all this started? My mum was 78 when she received the first scam letter. And um, basically she was overcome with excitement. She thought she'd won a big prize. Um, They told her she'd won this competition and she sent off a fee to claim it. And um, and that was the start of the five-year nightmare. So do scammers share information about who's actually falling for these cons? Yes, they do. Um, when my mother replied to that first letter, her name got put on what's called the suckers list. And the criminals sold this list to other scammers all over the world. So basically, that's how she first got um, snared. OK. And did your mum actually say anything to the family about this? Did she say that she reckoned that she was going to be winning something or any idea at all the family knew that something was going on here? Yeah, after that first letter, she did actually, she rang me up. I can can remember the phone call and she was so excited. She said, "Um, I've won a big competition. I've sent some money off. I think it was from America she'd sent the money. She said, "And um, we're rich. And she was really excited. As a mother, calm down. You know, what have you done? And she said, it's too late. I've sent it. So anyway, when I went to the house and saw um, the letter that she's replied to, unfortunately, there was no address on that. It looked like an official document, but there was no address on it. And right. um, the address was only on the return envelope. So she'd sent her money back and there was no trace of where she'd sent it to. So I'm kind of thinking in your head, alarm bells were already ringing here, yeah? Oh, yes. I mean, it was, you know, we knew straight away it was a scam. But... Um, my mum just wouldn't believe it. She was convinced it was genuine. And, of course, because her name got put on the suckers list, another criminal started writing to her. They sort of um, built this delusional world. They, you know, they kept adding to, the, um, to my mum's excitement. Now, we're talking here 30,000 scam letters. Now, I understand that your mum spent most of her time dealing with all these letters. I mean, that's a heck of a lot of letters to be dealing with, isn't it? Oh, yeah, over that five-year period, I mean, they started to come through thick and fast after that first one. Um, She spent most of her time reading, sorting, responding, um, filing. Um, Her whole life started to revolve around um, what the scammers were telling her and the instructions they were giving her. She was going to make bank transfers, she was sending checks, postal orders, and it just became her way of life. Um, You know, we, we obviously could see this happening, the family could see it happening, but uh, we couldn't uh, make her see reason. They, they, the psychology was that powerful that they made her think that we were the enemy. Well, I was going to say, how did she respond when you tried to convince her that she was being con? Because the family could see it here, and, you yes. know, sensible head tells you that this is a scam, uh, but when you're actually trying to tell somebody who's in the thick of all this, that's a different matter, isn't it? Yes, I think um, because the psychology is so powerful and uh, she'd not just got um, uh, fake lottery officials writing to her, she'd got fake bankers and solicitors, um, presidents of large companies, and she'd also got clairvoyants or bogus clairvoyants writing to her. And they started to turn her against the family. So the whole cocktail of these fictional characters did create the delusional world and kept her trapped in it. She was um, she was totally convinced that, that the family were against her by the time they'd, they'd you know, they'd all sent their letters and, and, and they were ringing her as well. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. Now, I believe all this actually happened after your, your dad passed away. So was your mum living alone at this point? Yes, my mum did live alone. Um, and I think probably that uh, contributed to why she, you know, she did sort of get so wrapped up in it. And probably one of the reasons that she was targeted in the first place, because um, she was obviously sold on some sort of a mailing list that categorised her as living alone and Mm. being of a certain age. How are these people able to keep things going for five years? Because this is a long time, isn't it? Well, it is a long time, but it's 
the way they do it is so clever. They've got letters coming in from fake lotteries, like I said, and then letters backing it up saying that, um, uh, you know, you're, we're a solicitor, you have to pay a release fee. I'm a banker, the money's being held, you've got to pay for administration charges. So it does actually make sense to the victim. If um, if you were to go into the house and just pick up the old letter and read it, you'd think, how on earth could she believe this? But the way it knits together, and remember that she's organised criminal gangs that are doing it, um, the way it's all knits together, and especially as my mum was suffering from some sort of declining age-related mental health problem. She wasn't diagnosed with any problems, but the family could see she had sort of a memory was going a little bit and she was getting a bit confused. Um, so they sort of hit her at the right time. Now, your mum passed away in 2007. Uh, did this contribute to her death, or all of this that was going on? Oh, definitely, yes. I mean, um, it uh, it just took over her life. And the workload, if you can imagine somebody of my mother's age, the workload it inflicted on her, you know, she was having... It was like she was doing a full-time job, and she was panicking that she hadn't got money to pay some of these scammers. She was missing deadlines. Um, she was traipsed into the post office in all weathers. Um, it, it got her all anxious. She would often ring me in the middle of the night um, asking to borrow money, and I'd try and explain over the phone, but I live 30 miles away. She'd slam the phone down, then she'd ignore... We couldn't mention the scam word. Right. You know, she would just ignore the calls. You and, and the rest of your family must have felt very helpless at this point because here's a situation where you knew it was wrong what was going on here. Your mother didn't believe you. She was being brainwashed by certain people into believing this yeah. was the right thing. Uh, there was obviously not um, enough money to be uh, you know, that she had, that she was able to actually pay what she was supposed to be paying. I mean, this was a complete web, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, it was almost like... Um uh, you know, they, they, they've got this, this hold on her, they've got her in some sort of a vice, and it, they were just sort of bleeding her dry. It was horrendous. So the rest of the family then must have been very, very concerned about all of this. Oh, yes, everybody was. In fact, it caused arguments amongst the family. Um, some family members said that if she's stupid enough to do it, she should leave her to it. They got sick of trying to reason with her. Um, I personally had many arguments with my mum because I didn't understand at the time how she could get trapped. And it was, it caused um, a, a big rift between myself and my mum because, you know, I was trying to, to get her to come and stay with me. She wouldn't come. She was worried about missing a delivery or um, the postman arriving or photographers, photographers were supposed to be coming for the Winners magazine. Um, and it was so frustrating, you know, just having to battle with her all the time. Well, I think it's a good time that uh, we just caught our breath here for a second uh, whilst I play some music. But afterwards, I'd like to talk about the charity that you've set up called Think Jessica and more about that in a few moments' time on Late Night Graham Torrington. And I'm talking to Marilyn Baldwin, whose mother Jessica was sent 30,000 scam letters, 30,000, and was conned out of at least £50,000. At what point did you bring the police in? I tried to find help um, throughout the whole five-year period. My mother wouldn't cooperate, so um, gaining power of attorney or redirecting the mail wasn't an option. I couldn't get her permission. Um, she threatened to disown me if I did any of those things. Um, so I contacted the police. I contacted Trading Standards, the Office of Fair Trading, the Royal Mail. I was literally contacting everybody, trying to explain what was happening to my mum and get help. And uh, nobody, there was no help available. The only advice that I got was tell her if it looks too good to be true, it probably is, which obviously was no good to my mum. And that was the only uh, advice available, and that was the only help available? That It was lip service, nothing else. In fact, one time um, I rang the police and uh, the policeman laughed and he says, what's the problem, just tell her to put them in the bin. I said, but the house is full of it, she won't put them in the bin. Nobody understood how strong the psychology was and, and the, the fact that somebody like my mother, who was, um, you know, age-related, declining mental health, but how she was so trapped in it. It's just amazing to think, isn't it, that here's a woman who was being conned out of £50,000 and at the time nobody could actually give you or her, the family, any help on this at all. Now, after your mother died, you set up Think Jessica. Explain what the charity actually does. Yeah, well, uh, firstly, I set up Think Jessica because I spoke to Mum's postman and he said there's a lot of pensioners getting the same amount of mail. 
Um, so I realised that there, there was a big problem out there that wasn't being addressed. So what I think Jessica does is um, we produce educational material which is sent out um, uh, to the homes of, of people like the mum, to elderly people, and especially people who haven't got the internet so they've got no way of finding help, making a report or getting education about scams. Um, um, this information goes out through trading standards, through Neighbourhood Watch, through police, um, uh, through age-related charities. So literally, we're all about educating um, older and vulnerable people so that they will recognise these letters for what they are. So when they receive them, they won't get that rush of excitement. They won't shut down the normal thought process. They'll actually recognise them and think, I've heard of these, I know what these are, and I'm not going to respond. Mm. Um, and that's the aim of Think Jessica. But apart from that, I personally give talks all over the country. Um, we do poster campaigns, we do awareness raising, we do police events, we do lots of things. Marilyn, we were talking earlier about how your mum had become deeply immersed in a world that these criminals had really created around not only her, but people like her as well. Uh, what's been called Jessica's Scam Syndrome. Uh, is that officially recognised now? No, it's not officially recognised, but we get um, hundreds of emails from relatives saying that my, my mother, my dad, my grandma is behaving exactly the same as Jessica. Um, and literally, we don't know what to do. So we want this to be recognised as a syndrome because as the law stands now, these people, um, it's their money, it's their mail, and unless they will cooperate, then they're left um, really to the mercy of organised criminal gangs. So we want it to be recognised so that if that's the situation, then that mail would get redirected to a relative or a trusted person who could hang them back the genuine mail. Just because these people don't recognise that they're victims doesn't mean to say they don't need protection. Right. Um, and that's a big grey area around so, all of so this. So, just to make it 100% clear, if I was being targeted and mm -hmm. I was responding, uh, uh, answering the letters and maybe sending money off somewhere, something could be done if I reported it personally. But if you were my sister and you could see there was an issue here, you couldn't yeah. do anything about it. Uh, that's how it stands now, but we want that to change. Now, the problem with Jessica's scam syndrome is that these victims are like my mum, so you can't get them to see a psychiatrist. You, psychiatrist sorry, you can't get them to go through a brain scanner. You, it's only the word of the relative and, and obviously the volumes of posts and the evidence that's at the, at the homes and that's from the bank. Um, you know, so we want, we want the law changing so that they will actually get protection. Well, and, and a relative can, re and a relative or a friend or a neighbour can report what's going on, and then it's sure, be investigated. Sure, sure, because that, that makes sense to me. Uh, what can people do to help protect themselves or someone in their family from being targeted and, and drawn in like this? We think that the main thing that people should be doing now is getting educated, educated about how these scams work and how how they do shut down the normal thought process and get you to send money and get you to respond. So if anybody's listening and they've got older relatives and they can write in to us and they can get a book and they can give it a booklet and give that to them so they've got that to education, they can read through it. Um, and that's the main thing. Don't rush. Don't – if you get any anything, exci anything at all that excites you, don't rush. Think about it. Take advice. Um, scams are all about rushing you and getting you to race to your checkbook or getting you to race to the bank. Mm. Don't do that. Take your time, think about it and get advice. Even ask at the bank, um, you know, if you get something you're not sure about, is this genuine? Uh, is the old saying absolutely true, that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is? Well, it certainly is true, but um, we kept repeating that to my mum and she kept saying, yes, it probably is, but it probably isn't. So I think our advice, if it looks too good to be true, think, is it a scam? and then start investigating and start taking advice. OK, uh, give me the details then of uh, Think Jessica so people can find out more and maybe get some help for themselves or maybe pass on the information as well. OK, well, the website is www.thinkjessica.com. That's easy enough to remember. And our PO box address, so if anybody wants um, a free booklet, write to this address and enclose a loose second-class stamp. And that is Think Jessica, P.O. Box 4442, 
and that's Chesterfield S449AS. OK, and if you didn't get those details down, if you give us a call here at the BBC tonight, uh, we can pass on those details. Marilyn, uh, good luck with everything that you're trying to do to try and help people like your mum and many others as well. Thank you very much indeed for joining me on the programme tonight. Thank you.